For the BD Freeman show, I feel like I look weird over on the uh, on the monitors there. It's gonna bother me all night. Uh, um, uh, so I hope you guys are digging my sexy threads. It is our Halloween show, as you can see from the uh, pumpkins up here. This is a <laughs> Halloween episode. Uh, also, this is also my birthday episode. As uh, Halloween, birthday. Halloween is my birthday. I decided to go with uh, a '70s look today because of who my guest is. And uh, I'm so excited about it. I'm not, I, I'm not even really gonna jump into a monologue. I rather wanna jump into the music. Ladies and gentlemen, from war, we have Pete Hall here today. Pete, Pete is here, he is here today, today, Pete Cole. And I'm telling you, we're, hey, why can't we be friends? There ain't no reason why we can't be friends. We're gonna be some friends when we get back. Go to the bathroom, get yourself something to eat. And when you get done, Wash your hands and then come back <laughs> and we'll be here, okay? Get us out of here so yeah, they can go yeah. do their hands. The to break it down with the man from war from the lowrider band Pete Cole <laughs> is here. Yeah. And let's get into some music. Okay. Get him, Gary. Yeah. Do it,
<laughs> that was fantastic. <laughs> Be cold. Be cold, everybody. The real deal. Warm from the Lowrider band. I love it. I love it. We're going to be right back. We're going to put our guitars down and sit down for a little chitty chatty. So we'll be right back. You guys. <laughs> I'm too excited. You guys, you guys go. Go do something. I'll be right back. You guys go back. so sad when you came back. That's not sad. Every time we come back from commercial, that particular commercial, you always come back playing sad. That's like, satisfied. It, it just sounds I just like, played with Pete Cole. It just, it just sounds like it just sounded like you were like, I'm still here on I, this show. No. <laughs> You're misreading. I was I just played with Pete Cole. Dude, I just played with Pete Cole. You just played with Pete Cole. We I, I, just, I, 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 you hey, play with Pete Cole. B, BD, BD. We just played with Pete Cole. <laughs> This is like the greatest birthday present ever. That's your oh, birthday that present. I, I'm, I'm doing all this while I'm sitting here not talking to Pete Cole. I'm not even talking about. Shh. I'm talking about Pete hear Cole. Us. <laughs> he might hear us. I think so. I think we don't want him to know how geeks we are about him being here. <laughs> Uh, we are so geeks about you, man. Oh, thank you, man. Thank yeah. you for being here. Well, I mean, hell, I just play with Pete Cole, huh? <laughs> <laughs> now, listen, you have a story to tell. Oh, well. You have a story to tell because, uh, you know, I mean, all of us, all of us growing up, man, I mean, war, that was that was it. That was how you did it. We all watched uh, uh, all the concerts, listened to all the music. You could hear it on the radio. Back when people listened to radio, you uh -huh. could hear it all the way down the street. One song, same radio station, all the way down the street playing all of y'all's music, man. Oh, it's a beautiful and, thing. And it was, I mean, well, first let me start with this. Let me, I don't want to get right to it. I like to have it as a meal. So we'll start with a little appetizer. How did you... How did you get into the band in the first place? And, and maybe even a, a, a better question is, how did you start in music? Well, my father was a musician. My mother was a singer. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got my voice from her, and my musical gift basically came posthumously. I mean, after he passed away. Yeah. You know, about a year after he died, man, it just, bam, I, it's like I got zapped. Wow. Yeah. How you know, it's uncanny. I had to be around 10. 10 years old. Yeah. Wow. You know, and of course, the rest is history. You know, it's been going on ever since, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so now you're 10 years old and you have this thing now vibrating inside you of music. What, how did you get from being 10 year old <laughs> Pete and wanting to play somewhere to being one of the biggest bands in the world? <laughs> well, man, it's a funny story, man. I mean, you know, I mean, I've been a musician, of course, you know, a, a, a professional musician, you know, since the age of like 16 or 17. Wow. You know, it took that period of time from when I first started to, you know, accumulate people, accumulate the contacts, and the next, you know, I'm in a situation, you never know who you're going to meet, right. you know. Well, you know, from that point, you know, all the way to, well, 30, 40 years later, you know, um, I am just happened to be at a, at a concert, you know. Uh -huh. Now, I've worked with a lot of different people over the years, yeah. you know, a lot of different people, you know, the Silvers, Billy Preston, oh, you know. Um, oh, yeah, jazz band, you what? know. Yeah, even, yeah, oh. <laughs> to name a few. <laughs> you know. I would trade yeah. some of my nights for your nights. Oh, bless Let's your heart. Let's <laughs> just put it like that. But, but here's the funny thing. You know, I mean, we all know you got to be more than a musician. So, you know, I was a bus driver for wow. a period of time, uh -huh. you know, and um, I was actually at the airport. And the funniest thing, you know, uh, I was in a situation where I thought, you know, I could, re I could do this for the next 20 years and retire, you know, benefits, all nine yards. But one day, like I said, I went to see war at the LA County Fair. But when I was there, I, I, you know, of course, seeing them on stage, I'm like, wait a minute, that's not them. Wait, it's only one of them. Mm. 
you know, it's only one of them, the guy on the keyboards. Uh -huh. You know, the rest of the guys are basically Hispanic. You know, you know, if you remember war, yeah, back in the day, it was six black guys and one white guy with an afro playing the harmonica. Uh -huh. Right? So, so, you know, the next day, and this is the very next day, I kid you not, the very next day, I'm at the terminal driving my bus. I let this guy off my bus. This guy gets on with a snare drum, which was the only catalyst for the conversation. You know, I, I, you know I'm helping him with his luggage, of course, you know. And he's sitting there with this snare drum. And I go, hey, man, you play drums? He goes, yeah. I said, man, I play keyboards. I write. I stutter, da 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 yada, yada, right? I just went and saw war last night at the L.A. County Fair. He goes, that ain't war. I said, I know. Then keeping in mind, this is the very next day after seeing the concert. He goes, that ain't war. I said, I know. Whatever happened to those guys? There was only one of them on stage, right? He goes, let me show you something. He gets up and shows me a picture. I go, oh, man, there's B.B. Dickerson. There's Howard Scott, Lee Oscar. And that's you. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. <laughs> it was Carol Brown. Oh, Whoa. wow. Yeah. Oh. It was Harold Brown. I was like, man, I mean, you can imagine the gushing. Oh, yeah. You know? But I said, man, can I keep this, right? They had a phone number on it. He was on his way to New Orleans. Uh -huh. He said, yeah, and he had his number on it. I said, I won't bug you, I swear to God. He said, don't worry about it, man. Keep that, man. He signed it. So sometime later, right? I get him on the phone, you know, sometime later, after I sent him, I sent him a CD through, that, through the information on the thing, you know, and uh, he goes, I was really impressed with your CD. I said, who knows, maybe one day we'll get to jam together. He said, you got to ask God about that. I said, okay, I will, <laughs> right? I kid you not, man, I'm, I'm driving my bus, you know, I'm, you know, and I'm thinking that same thought I said earlier, I could do this for the next 20 years. But that voice hit me, man. It came from out of nowhere. I'm going to take all this away from you, man. I was the only one on the bus, right? I started bawling. Ah, you know, don't take my job. <laughs> he said, you're, that same voice, you're going to do what I made you to do. And I kid you not, 9-11 hit right after that. Oh, and good. I lost everything. They laid off so many people, man. Yeah. It was so, I went through a difficult time, oh, yeah. okay? But 12 years later, I kid you not, 12 years later, man, I was at a party playing keyboards at this Christmas party, and the bass player there, he goes, Pete, don't leave yet. I want you to meet somebody. So I parked my car. I came on over and walked to him. I said, this is B.B. Dickerson from War. I said, oh, my God, of course, more Gushing, you know. He said, hey, man, you know, I, I'd love to play, man. I can do the work, right? That's what I told him. I can do the work, right? He said, take my card, and you know, we exchanged numbers. Six months after that, man, out of the blue, Pete, can you get a passport? We got some dates, and we don't have a keyboard player. I oh, said, bam, okay, where are we going? And so I'm thinking we're going to have an audition, you know, we're going to private quarters and have an audition, right? I went over to his house. He said, man, that's not how we operate. He said, let's get on the computer. He gets on the computer. He said, here's your ticket, pop, pop, pop. Da, 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 da. We're leaving out of this date. Da, 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 da. See you on that date, you know. And that was it, man. We flew to Kansas City, and that was the audition, man. My first concert. Wow. <laughs> wow. What was the first? <laughs> what was the, 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 that must have been. I can't even. I can't even imagine what that must have been like. Oh, that was weird. It was like, wow. I'm just meeting everybody before yeah. we perform. I'm meeting the rest of the band. Yeah. You know, Lee and, yeah. and Howard. You know, and of course Lance Ellis and Chuck Barber. I mean, Lance, he basically took uh, Charles Miller's place uh, after Charles Miller passed away. Lance was, you know, they put Lance there. You know, so he's the sax player. Yeah. And it, of course, after Papa D passed away, Chuck Barber. Yeah. So they, you know, they these are the, the old timers, right? I'm yeah. new, you know, and so now it's been um, close to ten years now. Yep. You know. And um, I mean, once again, you never know who you're gonna meet. You know. What, what was that? First, what was that first concert like? We standing, getting out there, well, onto the stage, going <laughs> out there and seeing all those people and the whole thing, and just the circumstance that now you are in this band. Man, I, it's a funny thing. I thought, you know, I thought there would be butterflies and nervousness. Man, I felt so at home. That's the blessing of it. It's like, you know, it, it, I, I received it. 
and approach it the same way as this, yeah. you know, like this. You know, we're, we're making this music, you know. In that situation, they just need more amplification. Okay. You know, well, I'm, glad, people, I'm glad you specified it was like in your way, because if you're like, if it was like this, like you know, this, yeah, I, I would feel really bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, no, but it was, I mean, a couple of thousand people out there, you know, but at the same time, you know, I realized, okay, I'm on my, I'm on my spot. I'm in my, da -da -da -da, I'm in the zone and we're just having fun. You know, I had them position me where I could see everybody on the stage so yeah. I could, so I wouldn't miss the cues, right. you know, and of course the, you know, so, oh, that must be very oh yeah, but here's a basic principle. It's really no different from what we just did. The only difference is there's a whole bunch of people out there, so you need a lot more amplification. That's it. <laughs> yeah, man. It's all music, baby. Man. <laughs> what was that first night like? Could you sleep the first night? Oh, yeah, man. It was like, I, you know, it, it, it felt so natural. That's the, that's the most amazing part of this whole thing. You know, um, when I met everybody, I didn't feel intimidated. I was like, hey, I'm Pete. Let's go to work. Yeah. You know, let's go to work. You know, and so they, you know, I believe that, you know, that they were impressed with that. Yeah. You know, that, um, you know, we went straight through it, you know, without a hitch. Yeah. And, of course, we each one after that, you know, yeah. and almost 10 years later, man, you know, wow. people ask me, are you an original member? I go, I am now. <laughs> You know, I, I am now, you yeah. know, because, I mean, I kid you not, man, true story. You know, once again, you know, when you're around famous people that people know, sometimes others will think you're famous too. You know, it's, it's uncanny. I'm on, I'm, we're, we're on a flight to, want to a concert. There's a little boy sitting next to me, man. He's looking at his little pad, you know, he's watching a movie. And I go, wow, that looks pretty good. You know? He goes, yeah, this is that, yeah, yeah. I said, he goes, why are you on the plane? I go, well, I, I travel and perform with a very famous band. And we play music, you know, everywhere. And we mostly fly where we have to go, you know. He goes, oh. He said, well, they're really famous. I'm not. You know, I just part of what they do. He said, well, you look famous to me, right? <laughs> we get off, we're getting off the plane. He goes, you know, his name was Wyatt. He goes, I'll never forget Wyatt. He goes, yeah, Pete, I enjoy flying with you. I said, you too, Wyatt. Take it easy. And I got up and got my little bag got off the plane, right? Man, I kid you not, man. We're all in front of the freaking terminal waiting for this limo to pull up. I kid you not, man. We're all standing. I'm standing with the guys, you know, Harold and Lee and, Howard and you know our road manager. All of a sudden we hear Pete, Pete, and I look, and there's Wyatt across the street with his mother. You know, she's standing there like this, you know, and he's like waving, you know, he, and then they come across and say, Be careful, look both ways, you know, the mom, you know. And he comes right over to me, man, with a little pad and pen. He goes, Would you sign this for me? Oh, you know, and they're like, you know, <laughs> so how the hell is this happening, right? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, you never know who you're gonna meet. You know, you gotta be meeting tons of people out there on the. What's it like on the road with the rock and roll band? We out there killing it every night. Well, you you you're tired at the end of the day. You know, I mean, when you're, you're really out, letting we, me down with yeah, this one. Yeah, you're, you're tired like, at the end of the day, the man. Band, it's the parties. <laughs> we go wild. We tear down the hotel rooms. <laughs> You're like, at the end of the day, we're tired. We're tired. I mean, it's the truth, we man. watch you know, the news, we go to sleep. <laughs> you know, and you got to keep in mind, you know, um, you know, for the most part, it's not like it was, once was, like, say, 50 years. Maybe for the Stones, uh, and, it may, and that may just be a front, okay? But, you know, the guys are basically in their, you know, early to mid-70s now. And yeah. so... You know, with them, you know, right after the show, man, they're, you know, they're into the transportation, going back to the hotel. And, yeah. You they're know, taking the, drugs, yeah, but, yeah. They're, but they're but, a different kind of drugs now. <laughs> <laughs> very, very different kind. Maybe sleeping pills. Yeah, you know, like, <laughs> Viagra. <laughs> Perhaps. I would never know. <laughs> but it's a funny thing, man. You know, um, the, the most fun that I have, man, when I'm out with the guys is, is with the sax player, man. We, you know, if there's going to be any party, and it's, you know, it's usually with him, the sax uh, player, and the percussionist. You know, we call ourselves the A-Team. 
<laughs> but you know, it's, it's like I said, man. We were we were out there. Um, it's just straight to the to the to the nitty gritty. You know, uh, we 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 don't see each other until then. You know, because everyone lives in a different state. I know, when I talked to you and I was like, by yeah. then, if, if, is it possible to get everybody? You're like, they're so man. far, everyone's so far apart to pull them all together with. Oh, yeah, man. Air. You know me, our sax players in New Orleans, our, our percussionist is in uh, uh, Portland, Oregon. Uh, Lee Oscar, of course, um, he's in Seattle. You know, Howard Scott, he's in Texas. And, of course, uh, Harold, you know, is in Long Beach, which is, might as well be a different state. Yeah, really. You know, yeah. yeah. And so, you know, when it's time to perform, though, you know, we'll meet up at the airport or, or you know, we'll meet up where we're going to perform. Yeah. You know, get on the plane, get there, get to the hotel, and we might see each other at the hotel. But it's usually, you know, uh, when it's time to go and get on stage. That's see, now, I, I, I was yeah. under the impression that... <laughs> You're a band. You guys were all like staying in the same room and bunk beds. You know, you guys were all living at the same house, You're partying it up every single day and night. You know, that's a, this is crushing all of my all of my dreams of what your life is, Pete. Well, they may have done that. I mean, what can I say? You know, about 50, 60 years ago. 50 or 60. <laughs> Is that when the last fun was had? <laughs> 50, 60 years ago? When I'm on tour, I try to make every night like a rock star uh, night. I'm the, I, I will, I, when I'm on tour, dude, I'm, it's, it's a wonder that I make it back to L.A. alive. Like that, is, that is really my, 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 the only thing that, that I have to absolutely do is get besides the shows is i got to get back here alive oh yeah and that that's the only thing that gets me back here alive is that i have to get back here alive oh yeah absolutely you know, man because this is where the money is yeah because we fly everywhere i mean we're getting on the plane it's very rare you know that we do anything other than get on the plane when we have to perform it's wow you know however um we will be at the la convention center um well in several months from now uh, well, but, tell, yeah. tell us when. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll, I'll make sure you guys have the date. Okay. But, but that will be Way to be prepared for a talk show, Pete. I uh, know. I uh, know. <laughs> we have concerts <laughs> coming up. When are they? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, after, you know, when COVID hit, our entire schedule was x -nade. Oh, yeah. You know, everything. Yeah. And, and that went on for, you know, I mean, it's just, I mean, it's just um, latter part of 2021 that they've opened the stage again. Yeah. You know, for us to perform, for people yeah. to perform. And so um, because of whatever reasons they have, because they don't really discuss it with the A-team, you know, um, our next concert, it, it won't be until um, May of next year you know and that's the la convention center oh. so i'll make sure you're posted on it okay well make sure oh. i got some tickets on it man. yes I mean, so, so, yeah, get passes yeah, okay you know, he's, like, he's not like i'm gonna make sure that you guys have vip all access <laughs> no nah, he's like i'll make sure you know about around I'll make sure you about know about it. when it might be <laughs> You know, I mean, well, just on. for that, you're all gonna get a ticket like Oprah. You're yeah. gonna get a ticket. You're gonna get a ticket. All right. <laughs> Look under your chair. <laughs> the BD Freeman show uh, makes a verbal contract of all these types of things. So I'm going to take this down and record it. That would be very nice. Thank you very much. Oh, man. Uh, boy, I cannot <laughs> wait. I will be the first one in line, man. I'll be the first one there. Oh, my will, goodness. Will you, uh, uh, so now we didn't get to we didn't get to the story of okay what here's exact, so so yeah. so now you're in the band all this here's, is going on but what exactly happens that takes it from being war to being the low lowrider rider band? band okay here's the story and this is actually before my time okay okay they had a company war did they had their own you know company the band right mm -hmm. now they were produced by a, a man by the name of Jerry Goldstein. I mean, he produced Sly Stone. He produced right. quite a bit of the, you know, uh, funk and soul artists of that time, yeah. Jerry Goldstein. But there was an incident that brought on a liability. 
which forced them to Chapter 11, that company that they had, which left the trademark open, you know, and instead of it being protected, um, the producer snatched it, basically snatched their name. He put up the paperwork and put it with his company, which is called Far Out Productions, you know, and that's what caused the rift. He goes, hey, look, I trademarked your name. You guys can work for me. I'll make sure you live the dreams of Africa, right? And they said, you can go basically go, you know. And uh, I would have said, what, uh, oh, yeah, what yeah. the hell is Avarice? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that could have been a terrible thing. That could have been a seventh circle of Avarice. No, all being I, very, all you know, I know. I'll, I'll make you all kinds of money. You guys will want for nothing. Uh, you know, just come work for me yeah, under my we, name. We all know how that sounds. Yeah. Right? Now, now, did, he, did he offer you an apple? When he <laughs> oh my like a, God! Take a bite. Yeah, take a bite. Yeah. I'm sure, man. Yeah. But but of course, you know, they were war when they were Garage Band. Yeah. Even before they got this, you know, discovered by um um the guy who oh God I can't remember his name right now, but um um Eric Burton. Eric Burton. Eric Burton, you know. Yeah. Uh, declares war. That was that album. You know, with Spill the Wine and so yeah. far. And, you know, and of course, you know, uh, Jimi Hendrix was the, that, they were the last guys to play with Jimi Hendrix the night before he died. Wow. Jimi Hendrix played with them and was dead the next day. Damn. Okay. But Eric Burden, of course, did an album with them. Okay. And then they, it, it was their name. They were War. You know, and so, of course, after that incident, many years later, after they blew up, okay, um, that producer, he, you know, he, he stuck his hand in there and, and snatched that name, man, you know. Basically, you surfed it, if you, you know what that means. Yeah. Okay, so. I went to college. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, and so, of course, there was the riff. So he basically did this, you know, he, he, he used, um, I guess, what can I say? He said, look, uh, to uh, Lonnie Jordan, you know, you come work for me, I'll take care of you, blah, 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 you have no debts, whatever, I don't know, you know, but basically, whatever he said to do, you know, whatever he said to influence them to come, he did it, you know? And of course, that left the rest of the guys, like, over here. So they were forced to change their name to lowrider band because after going to court to fight for the name the judge basically told him look his paperwork's in order there's nothing i can do about that he owns the name however he cited the producer mr goldstein he cited him on image infringement because there are pictures on every album so every dime that he makes using that name these original players get a piece of it. So when the George Lilo, you know, uh, when War performs, you know, Lonnie Jordan and, and the band that he uses, when they perform in concert, these guys get money from that. You know, I don't, but they do. Yeah. You know, because I didn't write any of the songs, unfortunately, but I've been a part of the music, you know, for a long time now. Yeah. You know, and um, so we go by the name Lowrider Band. And everybody knows who that is. Yeah. And the day that I met you, right, we were, I was on my, I, I remember now. The day that you and I met, I was trying to get directions. Yeah. And I was asking you for directions. Yeah. And that's how we met. And then but I was on my way. I told you the wrong way. To our next concert. <laughs> I'm sure whatever way I yes, told you. Yes, you did. You told me the wrong way and somebody else got yeah, me there. Yeah, that sounds but about right. the important thing right. is. You and I met. The important thing is, is that yeah. I sounded confident when I told you the truth. Yes, you did, man. You Even got Even though me. they were absolutely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but it worked anyway. It worked out anyway. It Look worked out anyway. We're here. Yeah. Now we're here. But that day, we were, I was on my way to performing concert. Yeah, I was like, yeah. I, I mean, I, I was. So incredibly happy after I met you. I remember telling everybody. Yeah. And here's, here's the funny part. Though. Here's, here's the, the funny part. part. The crowd was yelling, even though we were introduced as Lowrider Band, the crowd was yelling war. Yeah. You know? They know. They know. It, it happened, happened twice. Once there, at that place, I don't remember the name of it, but it was in Burbank. It was a 
really nice place, yeah. big place. But we were at the Ford Theater with Mandrill. And right after we performed, you know, the crowd wanted an encore, so they started yelling, war, war. And Jerry Goldstein was in the audience. You see, Jerry, he filed a federal injunction prohibiting them from even advertising as former members. Wow. Yeah. Nothing with the name war can exist on any of their promotions, advertisement, nothing. Not even the band formerly known as war. Nothing without a reprisal. Jeez. Yeah. So that's where we're at. You know, yeah. but however, man, you know, lowrider band, man, they've they've been um they they've gotten pretty popular, yeah, over the years. Yeah, I mean, I was talking to Arturo Sandoval one day. Um, he's um, uh, if you know who that is, he Dizzy Gillespie helped yeah. him defect. Yeah, okay, Cuba. I got you. And Arturo Sandoval is one of the premier uh, trumpeteers in the world, right? Arturo, man. But we were we were you know conversing. Uh, at the NAMM, Nam show. And, and, uh, and I, I just, just told him, yeah, I'm, I'm with Lowrider Band and, and blah, 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 you know, what we do. And he was like, yeah, I'm familiar with Lowrider Band. Yeah, they, they would call war. I said, that's right. But now they're Lowrider Band, but, you know, we still play all the songs. Right? Everybody that I've talked to said Lowrider Band. They yeah. Said, oh, yeah, that's war. But, right? here's, yep, it is. but here's the kicker. Okay, we're standing there, and I'm telling him this, and, and right in that moment, this guy comes running up, Arturo, Arturo, Sandy Boy, yeah, yeah, you know, he's gushing, and he goes, music, and he's speaking in Spanish, he's speaking in his, you know, in his language, but he goes, music, music, look, and he unzips his jacket and has on a lowrider band t-shirt. <laughs> And I'm thinking, thinking like, well, yeah. Yeah. He's, he's, wearing, yeah. he's, wearing, he's wearing our logo, right? And that's what I said to Arturo. I said, look, he's wearing our logo, right? But in my mind, I'm thinking Arturo was like, I wonder how much he paid this guy to come up there, right? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how much he paid him to come up here and do that. <laughs> but, yeah. But you never know what, what you know, what triggers the, the irony, Yeah. you know? And so, you know, that being said, man, um, you know, I hope that um, this coming 2023 will, will produce a lot more activity. Well, I know that we want you guys back here in 23 if we can get you. you man, I'll, I'll do my best. best. I'll let them know, we man. Give, we give, we give, give a try. Oh, man, I'll do my best. Back and forth. Yeah. And whether it's you, whether it's you and everybody, oh, yeah. we just want you back. Oh, yeah, man. Peace out, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's the end of the Beanie Freeman show. That means it's time for you to go to bed. There's nothing else good on television. All right, everybody. We love you. We'll talk to you later. I don't know why uh, there's something. There's, there's... Oh, oh, we're going to go, oh, out. We're oh. go out with music, Pete. Oh, oh. No. This was something I didn't even know. It's the first day. It's the first day. Birthday. Birthday.
I'm talking about, about the B.D. Freeman band. The, the, the band. The, the, band. the entire band. <laughs> ah, this is Greg over there. Gary. Gary. Did I say Greg? What is, uh, I, I'm way too excited tonight. You are oh, really God. It's the end of the show. Why are you still here? Please, go home. Go home now. Or if you're at home, go to bed. You know, one of the things I love about this is that you, you can, can talk, talk about pertinent things, you know. Are we still live? Yeah. Oh, man, we, look, the show is over. <laughs> Everyone go home now. The show is yeah. over. Good night. Good night. Yeah. There's no way I'm going to go on the late, the late show and talk about that. But yeah, that's what happened, man.